Thank you for coming to, to the Old Town Public House uh, yeah. for Coffee with Kyle. Thank Happy you very to be much. here. Thank you. Got to have coffee. Thank you very much. So what are your first memories of, of racing, period? Just, j just your first memories. Because you, you were born in... 72. Okay, and your dad's first cup race yeah. was 75. I yeah, think, I, I don't think remember that. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think, I, listen, yeah. same with me. But, but yeah, so, um, you know, I just being, when, once we moved in with him in 1981, yeah. so our parents divorced when we were four, we lived with our mom. Dad yeah. was out, you know, trying to yeah. trying to do his thing, right? Yeah. Trying to trying to make it as a race car driver. Uh, didn't pay much attention to the racing. It was all about going there and, uh, you know, driving to Rockingham, driving to Martinsville, Darlington, you know, Hickory, just places like that to um, play, yeah. you know, and wait for the other kids to get there yeah. and play. And uh, we hit Easter eggs at Martinsville or North Wilkesboro. That was one of my favorite yeah. places to go. That was a fun place. Wilkesboro was always a great race. Back then, too, all of my family went, the Earnhardt family. Yeah. And we would park a truck like at Charlotte up on the road course area. Yeah. You know, park. A, my dad would go park a flatbed. And then we'd all just gather there and eat. And so uh, that was a lot of my first memories. And you talk about the parents divorced. As you lived with your mom, did you know your dad raced? How not much, how really. Much? He didn't yeah. spend a lot of time with us. Yeah. And um, so not, yeah. I don't really recall him really being a race car driver. I know he had the shop outside my Memo Earnhardt's and we would go there. Yeah. I know he had race cars, yeah. but I didn't really think much about what he did on the weekends yeah. or whatever, you know? So yeah. we didn't spend that much time with him doing that. So you lived with your mom and then there was a house fire. Um, and then you end up moving in with your dad. What were those years like with your mom? Just you and Dale and your mom? Um, I mean, just, just, just being kids, I mean, yeah. it just seemed kind of get, you know, getting by. I mean, my mom worked uh, at the mill, which kind of in that time frame, you know, everybody worked at yeah. kind of a factory or a mill, um, different shifts. We would, uh, like I said, go stay at my grandmother's, you know, in the afternoon after school. Just kind of normal. I mean, yeah. it felt normal. When you left, when the fire happened, and you ended up going to live with your dad, how big a change? It was a big deal because he had this two-story house on the lake. We moved out of a rental, you know, this is a one-story little meal rental. So he had already, so he that had was what year? Bought, well, we moved there in 81, and so he, he had, had already, bought this lake place in 79. Yeah, and he had already won he had Rookie, won of, the rookie year, of the Year and then a championship. And a championship. Yep, so then in 80, middle of 81, we moved in with him. We were just finishing school, about a couple weeks left in school, so he would drive us over to Kannapolis to go to school. Yeah. You know, I remember Dad would have people over um, on off times. I mean, Doug Richard, just the names of old would just just all come over yeah. and ski and um, it was fun and then um, it changed when he got married to Teresa that was about a year and a half later obviously you know my mom can't come around anymore yeah. and that makes sense yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know in that situation but it changed and then she traveled with my dad and then it was like nannies we had a full-time live-in nanny that lived in our basement and then when my dad would be home he got really into the farm, and he, of course, he was a big hunter, and he did that a lot. But you know, he wouldn't come home sometimes till eight, nine o'clock at night. Well, then it was bedtime for the kids, and yes. you had to go to school the next day. So, it was very different. And then at that time too, you know, what's let's see, eighty six, seven. I mean, what magical years for my dad, right? He was achieving what he had worked so hard to achieve. And, in, and enjoying all that and those, but that just put more demands, you know, and the sport yeah. was changing. Um, and Dale and I were, you know, going to school and trying to be normal and kids were either loved us or hated us, yeah. right? They had all these misconceptions about us. Is that when closeness that you and Dale have and that bond y'all have, yeah. you have, you have a bond. And, and he said, he said recently, he said, I don't do anything without talking to Kelly. I talk to my sister Sharon yeah. all the time. She's yeah. one year younger than me. Talk to her almost every yeah. day. But is that when that bond began to solidify for you too? Yeah, I think that's when it of course really heightened. When we were at our dad's and we were just left with nannies and it was just me and him, we we're looking at each other like, okay, we're the only yeah. ones here, you know? Who's gonna tell me I did a good job or who's gonna be at school to help me out or who's gonna go to this soccer match or any of those kind of things, you know? So yeah, I would say that's probably when it really solidified um, then and and the absence of dad really not just being gone to the races but just being a part of the things that you were doing proms graduation soccer games softball games um, I know that 
Yeah, it, you know, it, it was, it's, it's absent. And on top of that, then you, you know, if you're, that's one thing to be gone to those things and not attend those things or whatever. It's just the way it was. But then it, in the home too, you're not tucking them into bed. You're not, you know, you're not home yeah. for bedtime and those kind of things. And he kind of left that to Teresa. So it was, um, yeah, it was, that, that was when Dale and I really forged our bond. That And it's been, I mean, it's, like no, if people say that it's like no other. Of course, it's the only thing I know. It's but I have to. I have it's a brother normal. and a sister yeah. too that I'm not as close to. Yeah. You know, so I I get the difference. Yeah. You know. You you mentioned a minute ago going to school, and kids. Again, your brother and I had a little bit of this the other day. Um, I was never close to a lot of kids. Yeah. Because, it, growing up in elementary school and middle school and high school, I always found it hard to be close to people because do you like me because I'm Kyle or do you like me because here stands Richard Petty? Yeah. Do you mean the jaw? Oh yeah, the motives, you're that? always worried about the motives of people. I Shoot, I worry about that today, yeah. you know? I worry about that for my own kids today. Um, but yeah, you're always worried about the motives of, of where people were going. And we wanted to have friends and yeah. we wanted that so bad. Yeah. But you just didn't know, and you didn't. And we changed schools a lot. You know, I've talked about that a lot in um, in interviews. First off, we went to private school. That didn't work out. Went to Christian school. That didn't work out. Went to military school. That didn't. Work. We finally <laughs> we finally got straightened out in military school, I guess, because they sent us back to public school. But you know, when you're changing schools every two years, yeah. I literally changed school every two years. Yeah. You couldn't even meet people. When you went to military school, you said Dale got shipped off. Yeah. But you followed. He got shipped off. He was a. <laughs> crazy bad kid. No, he wasn't that bad. <laughs> he just looked for attention yeah, all the time. Yeah, you know? that's right. That's and right. I don't know why. I mean, you've got sisters, um, so you, you see the differences in the way that you handled things. But I knew to just stay in dad's grace, good grace, was to do what he expected. Yeah. And there were expectations. You, know, you make A's on your report card. You don't back talk. You say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You be respectful. Don't talk when we're in a crowd of people until you're talked to, you know, and those kinds of things. And Dale, uh, obviously, we had the same rules, but I guess he did, he wasn't fine with just no attention as the good attention, and so he would get the bad attention, and he would you know he would just disobey. When did you move out? I moved, so I went straight from high school, graduated in June, um, and went straight to Wilmington for summer school. Drove my little self down there. Yeah. I got a Z24, Chevy Z24 for graduation, and um, that was that. My dad, as strict as he was, I didn't get my ears pierced till I was 16. I wasn't allowed to wear makeup. I wasn't allowed to go on a date. I'm like, Dad, he's like, I've got to meet people that you want to go on a date with. I'm like, you're never home on the date nights. <laughs> like, how are you ever going to meet somebody? And um, so he had, you know, he was just all these strict rules. And I'll never forget when I was in Wilmington, my roommate, her sister went to school in Raleigh. And so we could go straight up 40 to Raleigh from yep. Wilmington and go hang out with her for the weekend. So I call up and I talk to Teresa and she's like, well, you know, you're really, you're going to have to have to your dad about that. And I, so I'm like, okay, well, you know, tell him to give me a call. And I don't know about you and growing up with your dad, but if you called my dad, it was, what do you need? Yeah, that's exactly want? right this much time on the telephone. Yeah, it's that like much. you didn't talk about your day, how's it going, what's happening down in school, how's the weather in Wilmington, it's like, what do you need? And it's like, well, Dad, um, my friend, you know, I explained the whole situation, and he's like, I don't know what the hell you're calling me for. You're on your own now, kid. You're living on your own, da, da, da. I'm like, all right, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. You turn an adult and you're done, you're gone. I don't know exactly where, because I, I've, I've tried to, to piece this together, but you were a driver. Yeah. When did that start? Yeah. So when I was in Wilmington, um, Dale started driving late models. So like 91, 92. So he started first. He started first. Okay. So he started driving goat carts locally as a teen, had one flip, and Dad said, that's enough of that. You know, we're going to put you something with a roll cage. Um, and he and Carrie went to the junkyard, bought a street stock car, and they did that in Concord. So they probably did that like 90, 90-ish. I don't know how it came to be, but Dale went down and drove a late model for Gary Hargett, and they would come to Myrtle Beach. So I'd drive yeah. down to Wilmington, go to Myrtle Beach, watch Dale's races, um, and I even uh, tried to get them a sponsor. So I have this 25 or 30 page hand typed sponsorship proposal, and I still have it in my desk drawer no today way. just to remind myself and remind us how far we've come. Yeah, so but, you were pitching them. Yeah. You were pitching you know, them. So it's like summary, you know. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it's so funny. So one 
day I got this set of flowers and on the card it said, it's been so long since I've seen you, I've almost forgot what you look like. And so I called dad, you know, and we were talking on the phone and he's like, you know, what would it take for you to move home? And I said, well, you know, I've always wanted to race dad. And that was the thing, like as I never got to, I never got to go hunting, I never got to try my hand at racing, all of those things kind of as a kid. Yeah. You know, it's not for a girl, it's not for a girl, it's not for a girl. But I was the, like, most hell on wheels kid, you know, goat carts, motorcycles. When my dad taught me to drive a motorcycle, we he had this little Yamaha 125, little white dirt bike, and I threw him off the back of that thing. As soon as I took <laughs> off, I'm like, boom, there he goes. And, um, I mean, I slid underneath the chain link fence, got my legs all messed up, you know, and he's like, your, your girls are supposed to have pretty legs, you know, you can't do that. So I'm like, okay, now what, you know, what can I do now? And I said, well, dad, I've always wanted to race. And so if, if I can move home and race then and get my own apartment, because I'm not moving back yeah. in with you folks, um, <laughs> then I'll come home. And so I did. I moved home at the end Was of 90. Was there any pushback? Did he give you any no. pushback on the race? No. no. He just said, come on. No. And um, so that middle of that year, I started running the street stock that Dell and Carrie yeah. had ran, had scratches on it everywhere but the roof. I don't think they turned it over, but it was a piece. And um, I went to Concord, ran street stocks for the rest of that year. And then they had they put together the late model program yeah. that we ran. So with Western Steer and Mom and Pops. Yep. Yeah. I forgot the Mom and Pops yeah. stuff, man. Yeah. Those cars yeah. with the Mom and yep. Pops on the side, that was Bennett cool. Bennett Steakhouse yeah, and man. Prime Sirloin. God, man, that brings <laughs> back memories, cause I, I forgot, yeah. because I forgot. They used to be on every corner. Everywhere, <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Tony Urie Jr. said you were good. Yeah. That you had as much talent or more and most of them out there. So why did it come to an end? Well, so I had two more years of college when I moved home to, you know, and I yeah. raced. So then when I, I started working for the company that did marketing for Good Wrench, so okay. I went there part-time working. Then in 95, Dad bought Sports Image, which was the company that made the licensing product, t-shirts, hats, and all that good stuff. And I graduated from school in the middle of 95, right at the end, December of 95 I graduated. I was at the middle of the school year versus the middle of the year. Yeah. Um, and so I started working full time and I started doing good there. I didn't work in the shop. You know, both my brothers, Carrie and Dale, got to work in the race shop. Yeah. Once our sponsorship with Mom and Pops ended, it was just like, okay, well, Kelly, you've got this going on over here. You're working. You know, Carrie, I'm not sure what you're going to do. Dale still pushed to run late models and then got the chance to run the, the Bush car in 97. So it just kind of fell apart. When you were running, was Dale winning at that time? He only and, won and three came... late model races out of 159, so yeah. he didn't win that, that much That's either. what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like yeah. he was setting the world no, on fire in that doing, car. Yeah. In that, in, nobody in that was doing anything crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy good. Yeah. I'm going to move forward again, move to a different place, to JR Motorsports. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? How did that yeah. evolve? So in 99, Dale formed a company, Dale Jr. formed a company that just kind of held his business interest yeah. and he called it Junior Motorsports. He called it JR Motorsports. Okay. In 2001, when we lost our dad, yeah. I was in a situation at Action at the time. Now we've been bought out and, you know, everybody's clamoring for product, clamoring for stuff. Teresa's in the middle of the autopsy issues with with that and she's not paying attention because she can't you know to the license business yeah. and i'm in these meetings and it's like you know well we really need Teresa to do this and i'm like oh it's my dad you yeah. know it's, it's my family i knew too that dale's interests would not be looked yeah. after as closely as they were yeah um and so i begged him for months to and said you know let me come work for you let me come work for you let me come work for you so i ended up going to work for him in august of 2001 See, I think what fascinates me, and, and I don't want to step on any toes, yeah. but my grandfather started Petty Enterprises, and then my father came along and raced there and took over the reins and ran it. And then I drove for Felix, and then I started PE2, which was Petty Enterprise <laughs> too, and because I wanted a place for Adam to come along. And then in the end, I folded that back into Petty Enterprises, and then Adam's accident happened, so things begin. But it was like... For me, when your dad started DEI, I looked at it and said, oh, this is a new Petty Enterprises. Yeah. This is a generational thing. But it didn't pass that way. Why didn't it pass that way? Well, because he was gone. I mean, it yeah. would have. Yeah, it would have. Um, but, uh, I mean, we always were facing headwinds with Teresa. 
for whatever reason, you know, I, I can't, I, I can make assumptions, yes. but I don't know um, what the issue was. I know she was a young mother, you know, coming in to step parent two kids that were more than half her age. Um, that has to be yeah. different, you know. Um, then you have a husband who's getting all this notoriety and all this fame and attention and everything, and they're kind of building their thing and doing their thing. So I don't really know why she didn't want us to be a part of it, but she didn't. Yeah. I mean, at point blank, she didn't. Everything that we tried to do or do, dad was the glue that held it all together always yeah and so for her I, you know she just i mean it, everything with her is a uphill battle yeah. i mean everything with her was and it not just with us it's with everybody yeah. Yeah. you know it's everything in the sport you don't you don't hear from her you don't see things you don't see things going on with my dad and and just that legacy yes you know um and i think that's why for from a junior motorsports standpoint dale and i are so passionate about it because that's where it carries on from. Yes. Who's fired more people, <laughs> you or Dale Jr.? Me. <laughs> <laughs> There's very few that he sat in with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't see him sitting there. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's that's the way my dad is. It's hard. My dad, yeah. I used to have to tell my dad, hey. And Dale wants to be the good guy and everything, yeah. you know, but rightfully so, and that's fine. I always tell him, let, let me be the bad guy. You know, I don't have to stand out in front of people and talk to people that yeah. much, so. I, I used to tell my guys, when you let somebody go because they didn't do the job yeah. that you hired them to do, that's yeah. one thing. Yeah. But when you didn't do the job by finding sponsorship yeah. or doing the things you were supposed to do, it's hard to sit across the table yeah. from somebody. I had to stand in front of 21 people in 2009 and tell them that they no longer had jobs. Yeah. That and that's hard. Extremely difficult. Yeah. So now every decision that goes before you, you think about how you're going to sustain it. Yeah. And can you sustain it? Yeah. You know, when we went to four cars, how long can we be a four car team? Yeah. Because that's a group of people that you have to put in place. That's resources that you have to spend to make it all work. So, yeah, you look at everything from a sustainability and how long you can carry it on because you don't want to have to do that again for sure. Yeah. At all. Okay. So, I'm going to go to the next step, which is women in racing and your daughter. Okay. Okay. You guys had Danica yeah. as a driver. Yeah. Um, who made that call when she came to, to work for you guys? I mean, because she came straight from IndyCar to here. Yep. She had an agency working for her to put her in the place that she won't. But, you know, she wanted to run half seasons. She wanted to still do IRL. Yeah. Looking back, I think she should have ran more full-time seasons. But I think we were one of the few people that would do things on her terms. Yeah. You know? Um, because we all know it takes a commitment yeah. um, and we were in a position to where we could race part-time with her and, and make that work for her. But I lived vicariously through that. I loved that. Yeah. Um, you know, I liked celebrating the female aspect of it, female owner and female driver. Now Danica, she just wanted to be treated like everybody yeah. else, right? But, you know, that was a very fun thing for me to do that I really enjoyed because I didn't dream of being in her position, but I always go back and think, what if? What if? You know, what What if? Right. And I want a female racer to make it. Yes. You know, so bad. All right, well, so. you know I had some comments, <laughs> so I, I have to throw that out and put it on the table <laughs> here. That's fine. Uh, but because I, but I thought she was a marketing genius. Yeah. I thought she the, needed the, to stay in the seat longer. Yeah, the marketing yeah. around her yeah. was, was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Looking back, on that time with her, and you just said she needed to stay in the seat longer, but did that help move Junior Motorsports forward? I mean, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know if it really moved us forward or hurt us. I think it was good for us. I mean, I yeah. think it was good eyeballs. Yes. Um, people were looking to see what she could do. I just really wish she, um, I think she had a lot of confidence in her ability and didn't know what she was getting into yeah. at the end of the day. I mean, driving a cup car is difficult. Very, when it's you've a had big step. One season in an Xfinity car. Um, so I think, you know, her confidence in herself prohibited her from, you know, she was Danica Patrick yeah. and prohibited her from, from staying in our series longer. I guess I would say it was a plus in terms of people looking at our organization. Um, I can't say it was a minus. Let's go back to you. Let's come to Danica, your daughter. Yep. Or a Haley Deegan. Yep. And this day and time, and you say, I want 
a female to succeed. How has that progression been? How have you watched that progression change to the acceptance, the abilities, and where do you see that? Well, I think that we're all more accepting of a female in the garage, um, you know, but there's still a lot of stigmatism with what they're capable of doing, you know, and what they're capable of doing in a race car because no one's proved that they can do it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's just no one that has sustained and, and stayed in it and performed with results. I mean, I remember looking up to Shauna Robinson and Patty Moise, you yeah. know, and they were in the midst of doing their thing and first lady on a pole here or doing this, that, and the other, but there's just not enough of it to, to make it worth yeah. something, you know? If I look at it from the angle of my daughter racing, Carson, I'm like, this is too hard. It's too hard to make it in racing. I don't care if you're yeah. male or female. Yeah. But it's I think way that's, harder. I, I think that's a piece a lot yeah. of people miss sometimes it's too when hard, they try period. to say it. it's just hard. Yeah, it's just too hard, period. What I don't understand about our sport is why, and I said this on our Haley Deegan Dell Junior download, why is, are there not sponsors? And, and not Toyota, yeah. not Chevrolet, not an OEM, but why is there not a sponsor that wants to get behind a female yeah. in the sport? You know, because that's what's going to take. Listen, but I, they can't make it out of the ranks to get the city experience that they need to, to do get, to move on. and to get the time. And, and you know? we, I talked the same thing about my father yeah. with Bubba. Yeah. And you look at a, at a minority and you say, there's a lot of companies that talk to talk, but not many that walk to walk. Do you think that the women that have come before that have a pole, that have those lightning strikes mm -hmm. where you can see the potential, but it never materialized, has hurt the process because people were like, well, they tried it before and it didn't work. Do you think there's a little bit of that somewhere in the sport? I don't look at it like that. Yeah, I, I, just I, because, yes. you know, I know really what it takes to do what they've tried to do. Think about Haley Deegan. I mean, she's won three races yeah. on, in the West Series. How long are we going to give her to mature as a driver? She just started stock car yeah. racing. We know that it, I mean, she needs at least another year or two in what she's doing, two or so years in trucks, two or so years in Xfinity to get to yeah. a cup ride, you know? So it's like, are we willing to wait for that? Yeah. You know, are we willing to, to give her that chance to have that seat time and how long that investment yeah. is that people are making in her, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if people are willing to wait. Yeah, I'm not sure in this sport, I'm not yeah. sure in this sport or in this yeah. time anymore, people yeah. are willing to wait. Yeah. What's it like for you to watch your child race? What emotions do you have when you watch, when you watch her out there? I mean, I'm proud, I'm scared. When she first started racing, she was nine. You couldn't watch any of my videos because I was, cussing and mad and don't you do that don't you hit this don't you get away from her no da 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 you know but um i've gotten a lot better with that but i think that and you might could shed some light on this because you've had a similar experience but my dad always said if something happens to me in a race car, I am doing what I love to do. That's right. And so I feel like if you're doing what you love, no matter what it is, I'm okay with it. Yeah. But I go into it knowing it could. And, and I, I, I think about the fact that I could leave that racetrack at the end of the night falling in an ambulance. Oh, now trouble over at turn number three. We got one upside down. Big way. Red lights come on. That is the number one of Carson Elledge. But... I don't get spun out about it because it's what she wants to do yeah. and she loves it. Yeah, and, and you're right. I and mean, I, mean, I just can't imagine it any different. I yeah. can't not imagine supporting it. And, and I have to admit, that's the one, that's honestly the one solace I always take yeah. when I think about Adam. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was, God, he loved this. Yeah, yeah and, and that's it. Honestly, that's all I got. All right. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you very much for. Yeah for doing this. I appreciate it more than good. you know. Absolutely. It was Thank fun. You. I enjoyed it. Hey, Motorsports fans. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.